Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I am so glad to be here on the screen with you for another edition of Horse Center. It's the big Parks Racing Show. Parks Racing Show, Matt. I love it. Uh, yeah, well, they have just a full, a plethora, a smorgasbord, if, if you will, of stakes races on Saturday at Parks there outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Matt. And uh, let's let's start with the one to five shot on the morning line. You want to do that? Of course. The of Greenwood course. Cup. People People were hoping that next next would run in the jockey club gold cup uh at saratoga against highland falls and arthur's rod but trainer doug cowan says now we're going to go with another marathon for next matt he's he's won eight eight out of nine since he switched to long distance running on dirt or, or it happened accidentally when a turf race was taken off uh he's winning these races by an average of something crazy like 13 lengths a, a, a shot uh, last year, he won the Greenwood Cup by 25 lengths. When is he going to try a shorter distance? I mean, I, I think you're expecting him to win on Saturday, first of all. Well, of course, yeah. Uh, of course he's going to win. I mean, the only way he won't win is if, you know, something uh, unexpected happens. You know, uh, the, the, the tote board fails and they have to stop the race, uh, the starting gate doesn't move you know i don't yeah I, I don't know you know he's just uh he's just a machine and, and just when when he's winning by those huge margins he's just having a grand old time down the stretch uh doing it and so he he loves it he's the best at those distances and for everybody else it's you know it, it's a real stretch you're, you're running for second place. You literally are in these races when you race against next. And we, yeah, the Greenwood Cup, I mean, absolutely should be another double digit win for next. I'm hoping that this leads to the Breeders' Cup Classic. And the trainer has said that maybe, maybe next time is the Breeders' Cup Classic. Maybe that's the time they'll cut back in distance. Remember in the Brooklyn, that was only 11 furlongs. And they, they cut down to 11 furlongs. And he looked great. He'd be, be croupy who ran a heck of a good race in the Whitney afterwards, uh, he'd be croupy by almost 10 lengths at 11 furlongs. So why not 10? Let's see him in the Breeders' Cup Classic after this easy Greenwood Cup win. What do you say? Uh, yeah, I would like to see him uh, uh, give it a shot with his domination in these marathon uh, marathon races, or, or I would like to see them bring back the Breeders' Cup Marathon race. Yeah, but even the Breeders' Cup Marathon race, Matt, is going to be next by 17 lengths. So I think he very well may be our best older horse in the country. I mean, I understand that he's he likes to lope, uh, lope around on, on near a moderate pace, and then he just doesn't get tired. He just keeps running as fast as he ever has, and that's why he's so dominant in these races. But seeing how he did at 11 furlongs, it might just work at 10 furlongs, and I think he's the best older horse in the country. Without further ado, Matt, let's get the two million dollar races that people are waiting to see. I'm going to put up the cotillion ladies first, and of course, this one is topped by none other than than my favorite horse, Torpedo Anna. Matt, I, I've been on her for for all year basically, and I, I've said she's the best three year old in the country. You've you've agreed with me the last few months. Torpedo Anna coming out of a tough race last time in the Travers. Yeah, a tough race in that, uh, you know, uh, her valiant run down the stretch fell uh, uh, fell ahead short in the Travers, uh, 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 and that was a fantastic effort. I kind of feel about Thorpedo Anna running against the Phillies the same way that we were both feeling in that discussion about next. That, you yeah, know. well, I sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I, I mean, to a point, yeah, it's like a three-year-old Phillies, it's, it's just been easy for her this year. But I don't know. I, I, the Travers was a tough mile and a quarter race. And, and there's some good Phillies in this mile and 16th race uh, four weeks later. So I, I don't think this is quite the slam dunk that next has in the Greenwood Cup. 
Uh, no. Having said that, having said that, if she runs her race, she's an easy winner, right? Yeah, no, I, uh, you know, I, I see why you're saying that, but you know, honestly, I had, I have the, 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 the of similar kind of feeling where I fully expect her to win, and I fully expect her to win by, you know, four or five lengths, like she has been against the Phillies. I guess it's fair to think, well, what if that race in the Travers against the boys? takes a little bit out of her well okay could be i think it's going to have to take more than a little bit out of her though yeah you're right it, it will and, and even when we look at those four or five length wins in the fantasy the kentucky oaks the acorn and the coaching club american oaks i think that's what people didn't realize going into the traverse those were so easy for her uh, you know she won by uh, approximately five lengths but they were just so easy, and and she was able to raise her game. I'm going to maintain, and any, anybody that wanted fierceness to win or was right about fierceness winning is going to disagree with me, but I'm going to maintain that if she had run at the top of the stretch, if she didn't have to wait and move outside and follow fierceness after he got the jump, I, I, I think she wins that, Travers, and, and that's how good I think she is. So, yeah, you're right. Probably uh, 75% of Torpedo Anna's best handles this field but let's take a look at the field because like i said it is a good field she's dropping down to a mile and 16th power squeeze matt has won five stakes races this year yeah what a fantastic record uh for uh for power squeeze uh, i guess if thorpedo anna wasn't around uh, this might be the leader uh, of the division last time you know she uh, she was a winner of the Alabama. She was a winner of the Delaware Oaks. Both those times, Torpedo Anna wasn't around. When Thor Torpedo Anna was around, she was third in the Acorn and sixth in the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Torpedo Anna, the two races she tried Torpedo Anna, she was beaten by a combined, combined by more than 23 lengths. So it's a stretch for Power Squeeze. To expect to beat her here she's going to be coming from well back there is some speed in the race um two tough wins delaware oaks was a nose the alabama was ahead she had to battle and she showed some class in doing it but uh once again what's going to happen against torpedo and number two is scalable matt and scalable uh is getting better for trainer todd pletcher is the daughter of spites town the gray philly uh, has only won three of nine lifetime, but she's won two in a row. And last time it was graded stakes at Monmouth Park. Yeah, two in a row. Uh, nice allowance win at Churchill Downs and then the, then the Monmouth Oaks. Um, but again, now uh, she's going to be uh, facing Thorpedo Anna for the first time in her career. Yeah, I, I, I guess we could say, well, now she's facing Thorpedo Anna. Maybe <laughs> not for the first time, but we can say that about all the other fillies. Uh, Torpedo yeah. Anna is Torpedo Anna. Uh, scalable will have to move forward, continue to move forward to have any chance in here because she's never run a race uh, close to what Torpedo Anna has done in all five starts this year. I think the three horse is an interesting horse, Matt. Tarifa, Tarifa was at, uh, once upon a time a Kentucky Oaks, uh, probably a favorite after she won the Fairground Oaks. That was her third win in a row, the daughter of Bernardini, trained by Brad Cox. She caught a sloppy track in the Kentucky Oaks, and maybe we can give her a little bit of a pass there when Torpedo Anna beat her by 18 lengths. <laughs> I, okay, I, just because it was a sloppy track, okay, maybe we can, uh, maybe we can give her a pass for that. Um, most recently, she was second at Ellis Park uh, in the uh, Audubon Oaks. Uh, um, you know, it, it's the uh, uh, it, it's the same story here. There, it's, these are a lot of a lot of nice, a lot of nice fillies with in this race with graded stakes wins. But hey, let's face it, two hundred thousand dollars or so for finishing second, not so bad. Yeah, and, and maybe we are going to sound like a break, broken record. Uh, no, number four is Everland. Everland is uh, cross centered in a stakes race at Churchill Downs the same day. Uh, Everland might uh, be better off the daughter of Arrogate running in that stakes at Churchill Downs because I think she would be probably the biggest long shot in this race. She is a stakes winner. 
uh, at Turfway Park early this year, but um, recent races, including a uh, near miss third, uh, maybe she had some trouble in that allowance race at Ellis Park, but it, it looks a little bit light for what she'll see here. Yeah, I think so. Number uh, five is a very interesting horse. Sidamara uh, might be the three-year-old filly at least two turns with the most potential after Torpedo Anna. And that's, you know, power squeezes one five stakes. So what am I saying? But this Judmont filly looks like she's getting better with every start. She hasn't been worse than second in four career starts. Uh, two nice wins in Kentucky in her second and third race. And then last time she gave everything that Power Squeeze wanted in the Delaware Oaks. If she steps forward, maybe she's the second best horse in this race. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and and that's something different, at least, that we could say about this one, uh, as opposed to the other horses that uh, we've been mentioning that, you know, have, I think, shown their best in various races and have, and, and have gotten nice victories when they run their best. That's right. Yeah, Sidamara might be uh, moving forward to 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 be um, maybe maybe she's can can beat Power Squeeze this time and maybe is the horse to beat for second. Uh, the next horse, of course, on the post position list, Matt, is uh, none other than Torpedo Anna, uh, Grade Two Fantasy, Grade One Kentucky Oaks, Acorn, and C Coaching Club American Oaks, two Grade Ones at Saratoga. The big race last time on Gushing. I think she's the best real filly I've seen in years. I hope I'm not jinxing her here. Uh, let's look at the pace projector because they say she will be one of the ones following the speed. Um, do you see an issue with a, a good pace and her pretty close to the pace? I, Brian, uh, um, I, don't, I don't think uh, you're jinxing uh, Thorpedo Anna here because you've been saying the same thing about her uh, in uh, – uh, all of those big wins that we have seen. Um, look, my feeling is that she can sit wherever she wants to in the early stages of this race. And that's exactly what uh, Brian Hernandez will do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think you're right, Matt. I, I, I think, uh, I think I'm looking for reasons why the favorite could be beaten in, in a good field here in the grade one cotillion, $1 million dollars race 12 on Saturday. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, she's she's tactical and she has a button that most horses just don't have. The horses that will be out there with her or ahead of her early are to her outside. They include the seven, Gunsong, and the eight, Mystic Lake. Um, let's talk about Gunsong first, Matt. Uh, Gunsong is one of those fillies, I think, or one of those horses, I think, where She's a nice filly, and she gets the job done in a lot of races. She's won four out of nine, has the daughter of Gun Runner for trainer Mark Hennig. Uh, she's won the Black Eyed Susan. She won the local prep, the Catherine Sophia. But on the other hand, when she faces better fillies, we saw it in the Acorn. We saw it to an extent in the Gulfstream Park Oaks. She just seems to fall a little short. Yep, I think so. But again, like we've said, uh, uh, this is a nice horse who has gotten – a really nice victory on her best when she, uh, particularly when she won that black eyed Susan and has already shown that she likes the park's racing surface with that prep win. Yeah, it was a nice win in the Catherine Sophia. Um, she didn't beat, uh, of course, a lot of what she'll see here. Maybe, uh, you know, I, I said Sid Amara is probably the most interesting horse in the race outside of Torpedo Anna. Maybe Mystic Lake is the most dangerous horse outside of Torpedo Anna. I say that because of her speed. Uh, I've seen this race where uh, horses have uh, 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 shown speed early and then just kept cruising down the park stretch. Uh, ceiling Crusher, Society. Could Mystic Lake get out there and, and just be really hard to catch? Well, and, and I'll add to what you said, Brian, uh, uh, that uh... – because uh, Mystic Lake is trained by uh, Safi Joseph Jr. And, and let's face it, Safi has been known to pull some uh, to pull some upsets. So I guess that could be a reason to say, oh, you know, uh, who knows what Mystic Lake might might do. Um, she won the Charlestown Oaks last time. If you go back to uh, 
Preakness weekend. She won the Ms. Preakness stakes. So, Safi Joseph, I'm pretty sure I remember him uh, pulling a big upset on this day at Parks uh, about five years ago. Different kind of horse in the Penn Derby that day. But, um, yeah, she, she – listen, I, I think her only chance is to go to the lead. She's won four stakes sprinting. And um, last one was probably her best race yet, Charlestown Oaks. Mike Smith, big money Mike Smith, will be on a speedy filly on the outside. Torpedo Anna, though. That I agree. Uh, she's the horse to beat in here. Morning line says four to five. She could be approaching one to five in the cotillion, despite a lot of the best three-year-old fillies in the country outside of her are, are in this race. That's how good she is. All right, let's look at the Penn Derby, certainly a more wide-open Penn Derby than the cotillion. And we got a nice size field here, Matt. We got a field of 11. Uh, I, I think we can make a point for a lot of these horses, but I do think that Dragoon Guard is going to be a pretty clear favorite, despite me saying this is a little bit wide open. Yeah, I well, uh, 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 but I feel the same way. I feel that this race uh, uh, is a bit wide open. I feel that this is a contentious race. I think that there are four or five legitimate uh, win contenders in here, but still... Uh, Dragoon Guard will probably be a heavy favorite. That's because of the winning streak. Uh, four wins in a row in her four most recent starts. Only a uh, 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 second place in her debut, which in his debut, which happened last year, is the only blemish in his record. It's Brad Cox. Put all those things together, you're going to have a heavy favorite. Yeah, I agree. I, I think he'll probably be lower despite the depth of this field. I think he'll probably be lower than the nine to five morning line. So an interesting betting race, perhaps, if you think Dragoon Guard, who's four for four this year, is beatable. One of the horses I like in here a little bit is a, a long shot on the rail. He's one of two New York breds in the field, mounted son of Solomini, Doc Sullivan. Doc Sullivan is uh, trained by Mike Maselli. Uh, we've seen Maselli with some good horses over the years, as in, uh, and I think he has a good horse here, a tough horse. I've seen this horse uh, bust through horses, uh, uh, work around traffic, and then show a turn of foot. Eight straight races, he's been first or second, but he's been facing New York Breds. Yep, New York bred, and for the most part, has been racing against New York Breds. He does have one open company victory in an allowance. Uh, a super consistent horse, uh, trainer Mike Maselli. I think we used to see him ride ride at Monmouth Park uh, back in the day also, uh, Brian. Uh, Doc Sullivan's uh, a nice horse, and, and I certainly don't discount him because he's a New York bred. Yeah, yeah. Not, uh, two, one of two New York breds in the race, and personally, the New York bred I like better, Doc Sullivan. Number two, of course. We're all familiar with Seize the Gray. Seize the Gray, I, I saw him the other day getting off the van, and boy, he is a whole lot of horse, racehorse, Matt. Uh, I guess we shouldn't be surprised as a son of Arrogate, but the Preakness winner, the Pat Day Mile winner as well, um, he, he's had eight weeks off now since uh, some disappointing efforts in the Belmont and the Jim Dandy. Uh, maybe the eight, work, eight weeks off has done Seize the Gray some good. Well, maybe uh, maybe he needed those eight weeks off, uh, uh trained by uh, the Hall of Famer, Dwayne Lucas, who we know um, will run his horses and run them, you know, uh, 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 regularly when they are in good form. And that was certainly the case with Seize the Gray with the Pat Day Mile and the Pre and the Preakness win, and then right back in the Belmont Stakes and then on to the Jim Dandy. Uh, uh, you know, in today's world, that that's a lot of racing, and it was racing against the best – three-year-old so uh yeah uh eight weeks uh with those victories that we've talked about he is one of the horses that i consider to be a serious contender to win this race yeah yeah i i think the eight weeks does him good um oddly after setting the pace in the belmont and then having no answers for door knock at the top of the stretch uh the jim dandy he really didn't show much speed i i don't know if that was a plan but he didn't show much speed in the Jim Dandy, and he was a well-beaten fourth in a really good edition of the Jim Dandy that day. Um, maybe they get back to showing the kind of speed where he's really excelled 
in, in his most important wins. So I put up the time form U.S. pace projector because a couple things here, Matt. We see Sees the Gray is the early leader in this pace projection, and they are projecting a fast pace. Yeah. So with the fast pace and Sees the Gray on it, uh, I think that affects a lot of horses in here. Sees the Gray being one if he goes out. A long shot there, three, Lonesome Boy, is uh, uh, close. Number seven is the favorite that we've already talked about, Dragoon Guard. Number nine, another long shot, Who's the King? And then you got a bunch of horses not far behind them. So fast pace, nine furlongs, uh, maybe some of the favorites, like Sees the Gray and Dragoon Guard, will uh, will hook up a little bit early, Matt, and, and that could make it a, a tougher race for, for both of those horses. Yeah, we, I, I think the pace, uh, how it actually plays out, is going to be an important factor in this running of a Penn Derby. I don't have much to say about the number three. Uh, number three is Lonesome Boy, Matt. He he looks like a uh, a couple cuts below the best in here. Anything you like there with the three, Lonesome Boy? I don't know if like is the right uh, uh, is the right word, but interestingly, he is a Washington bred that is based at parks. Ah, Washington, one of my old states. Uh, yeah, I uh, I guess that's the best thing to say about Lonesome Boy as he looks for a win in this Pennsylvania Derby. Number four, though, might be a little bit more interesting. Number four is a uh, Bill Mott trainee timeout. Timeout still pretty lightly raced is the son of Curlin. Uh, he was in that Curlin stakes uh, when Unmatched Wisdom won it. Uh, uh, as a prep for the Travers, and uh, he finished third, four lengths back. It's not all that threatening. Last time he dropped down to Allowance Company, and again, he got beat second by half a length. He looks like a horse who could be getting pretty good, but I don't know if it's good enough. Yeah, it's a big, uh, it's a big step up here into grade one company for a horse that only has a maiden victory. Uh, in his record, uh, Bill Mott was, I guess, considering uh, sending Batten down or timeout to the Penn Derby, and we end up here with uh, timeout. Yeah, Batten down's in uh, Kentucky, and timeout, he goes with a long shot here. But timeout, I, I still think the well-bred horse has some potential. Maybe he can step forward on Saturday. Another horse who has shown flashes of, of good things but only has one win, just like timeout, is protective. The difference, I think, is protective has run in some big races already and shown some pretty good form. He's also getting Irad Ortiz back in the saddle, uh, Rapoli, Pletcher. I, I have a feeling protective is going to take some money here, Matt, even though he's coming off finally breaking his maiden last time. Yeah, in a way, he reminds me a little bit of uh, uh, the horse that you mentioned earlier, Kruppi, who, who took a long time to to break his maiden, and uh, prior to doing that, uh, ran in some ran in some stakes races. That's the story with Protective. Also, uh, he didn't break his maiden until his seventh try, but before that, was third in the Wood Memorial was third in the Peter Pan, and then went on to uh, the uh, the Belmont Stakes where he finished sixth. So uh, uh, certainly a different kind of an unusual uh, 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 past performances for a Pletcher runner. But like I said, it, it reminds me of Krupe. Yeah, and, and to tell you the truth, when you said he reminds me of somebody, I thought you were going to say dreamlike who ran a big Penn Derby last year and was kind of the same horse who showed some things in stakes races before finally breaking his maiden, uh, maybe protective could, can pull off a dream like here and run a big Penn Derby uh, off a of Saratoga maiden, which by the way, was at 10 furlongs and wasn't very fast. Number six, just step on it, Matt. Um, uh, he, he's the other New York bred in the field uh, to go along with Doc Sullivan. And he has some stakes experience here, um, especially recently. He's also won a couple races at parks in his career. But a, a notch below, yes. But on the other hand, he was good enough to finish fourth in the Haskell and second last time in the Smarty Jones. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, going back, uh, he was a maiden breaker in a maiden claiming, uh, or, or he ran in uh, 
maiden claiming race and got claimed for 32,000 back uh, when he was looking for his uh, first victory. Obviously, he's progressed from from there, uh, getting that allowance win and a fourth in the Haskell. That's not bad. And second in the local prep, Smarty Jones for uh, the Penn Derby. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, a long shot to throw in the Superfectus. I, there's a lot of horses I like better than just step on it, including the other New York Brett. But um, yeah, his last few races are, are are pretty good and representative of a horse who has at least a shot. Uh, the next horse, of course, is Dragoon Guard. We've talked about him a bunch already. Interestingly, uh, he'll be part of that pace that we talked about, fast pace according to Timeform US pace projections. Uh, interestingly, four for four this year, and he's he's done it in much the same manner. He just gets out there, he lopes along. He's a big, athletic-looking gray horse, a, a, a handsome gray. Uh, last time, last two times, Indiana Derby, West Virginia Derby, look pretty simple. H have we gotten to the bottom of this horse yet? I don't know. Uh, we'll certainly get a, a, be a an answer to that in the Pennsylvania. In the Pennsylvania Derby, uh, Brad Cox, tra his trainer, won this race last year with uh, Saudi Crown. Uh, and for me, I, I do have the question in my mind. Those last two derbies that he won were grade threes, and now he's going to face a, a, a pretty big field and without question the strongest competition uh, in his career. He's going to have to step up a little bit in my mind to win this grade one. Yeah, and, and I'm not going to disagree with you. I, he's been doing it pretty easily, but he's been doing it against easier horses. Uh, less uh, less distance until the last one. It was the West Virginia Derby, which wasn't a strong field. Now he goes nine furlongs with a good pace, as we've seen. There's just too many speed horses in here not to have at least a solid pace. So, yeah, I think there's questions for a horse who we already identified as, as probably a pretty heavy favorite. Um, despite him being a heavy favorite and, and the Preakness winner and, and other horses to consider here, I was really surprised when I saw Unmatched Wisdom listed at eight to one on the morning line for this race, Matt. Uh, Chad Brown, Flavian Pratt uh, aside, I mean, Unmatched Wisdom has done enough where I think he'll be bet uh, lower than eight to one. And with those connections, I, I just don't see him at eight to one. But on the other hand, with everything to bet, maybe he's a solid five or even six to one. Who knows? Yeah, who knows is right. Uh, um, I tell you what, eight to one uh, ultimately for me would be unexpected for uh, unmatched wisdom. Uh, let's remember, this is a Chad Brown runner. Flavian Pratt will be riding. And 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 even though Irad Ortiz won the riding title at uh, uh, Saratoga once again this summer, uh, there are many who think that Flavian Pratt had the best meeting winning so many, so many stakes races uh, during, during the meeting. So you've got Chad, you've got Flavian Pratt, you've got Unmatched Wisdom, who won his first three races impressively, including the Curlin that we mentioned. I, I don't see getting eight to one. I'd love to see, I'd love to see it happen, but I don't see it happening. And then he was in the Travers. He had a really weird, uh, weird trip in the Travers, Brian. Uh, got roughed up a little bit in the early going. Um, later in the race, one of his rundown bandages in the back came loose, and he ran the last five furlongs with, uh, uh, with bandage flapping around uh, uh, from, his, uh, his, from his back end. Uh, I don't know. That combined with the uh, with the rough start in that race gives me uh, a little bit reason to uh, 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 draw a line through that Travers performance. Yeah, yeah, the Travers is, is is a wonky kind of race for unmatched wisdom. You don't know how much the class of fierceness and Torpedo Anna and Sierra Leone and Doorknock uh, just were too much for him, but also the trouble that he had and unusual to see a bandage come loose during the race but he was bothered at the beginning as well lot to like here this is a horse who nine furlongs will not be an issue with especially with flavian prat getting back aboard he's three for three with prat in the saddle by the way he's already had two races at nine furlongs 
and a race at a mile and a quarter, despite being the most lightly raced horse in the field. I think you could partially draw a line through that Travers, and and, and maybe that line is uh, underscored by the fact that the Travers was the best race of the year. So uh, he, he's got enough tactical speed to stay in it, but I think he can pass horses, as we saw in his first couple of races. So really a lot to like for Unmatched Wisdom, uh, especially the that that wild morning line of eight to one who's the king looks like a long shot uh, my question for you with who's the king matt is uh mike smith is riding this horse well uh i'm, I'm sure mike smith uh has plenty of mounts in all those 11 uh stakes races so uh, uh you know he, he he's got to get a mount up uh, uh uh in the pennsylvania derby uh for sure uh this uh this horse was claimed earlier in his career for $35,000 from a maiden claimer and did break his maiden in a maiden claimer. Uh, um, we mentioned, I mentioned this earlier, uh, uh, who's the king is trained by Safi Joseph, who uh, did win the Pennsylvania Derby in 2019 with Math Wizard at over 30 to 1. Yeah, well, good luck to this one. I, I don't think they're going to do it again. Uh, I, I don't like who's the king in the Pennsylvania Derby. I don't really like Uncle Heavy either. The winner of the Withers has been well beaten in the Wood Memorial and the Preakness and the Ohio Derby. Last time he was closer, but he was third behind Gould's Gold and just step on it in the Smarty Jones. I, I think he's just a cut below, although Butch Reed is a trainer I, I generally really like. Yeah, I do too. Uh, this uh, Pennsylvania bred earlier, early in his career, uh, won some races at parks in Pennsylvania bred races. He kind of burst on the scene in the Withers uh, early on the Kentucky Derby Trail with a nice victory there. But since then, has I think disappointed Butch Reed a little bit. Uh, um, certainly uh, not getting the kind of performance he, he uh, expects. That fifth in the Ohio Derby was uh, disappointing. Maybe the third in the Smarty Jones, I think he added blinkers in that race, uh, was a little bit more encouraging, but we shall see. Yeah, that was a listed stake, and now he's going against a full field of grade one. Um, not for me, Uncle Heavy. Uh, the outside horse stronghold, uh, we haven't talked about him at all yet. He's second choice on the morning line is the Sonic Ghost Zapper. Phil D'Amato bringing this horse east from California. We've seen horses come east from California in a lot of big three-year-old races over the years, and they've done well. Stronghold really doesn't have much to argue with on his past performances. Heck, he's been first or second in seven out of his eight races. The only one he wasn't, he finished seventh out of 20 in the Kentucky Derby. Um, he's had some spacing since the Kentucky Derby. We had a decent race in the Indiana Derby where Dragoon Guard probably had the pace advantage, uh, was second there. Now he's had another more than two months off since then, and certainly is a dangerous horse coming out of the far outside post. Yeah, I think so, Brian. Uh, and that seventh in the Kentucky Derby was a good seventh. Uh, he was right up there pressing the leaders in the early going and then got pushed out really, really wide uh, coming into the stretch, uh, leading to the seventh that the seventh place finish in the run for the Roses. So, yeah, I mean, uh, two wins on the Derby Trail in the Santa Anita Derby and the Sunland Derby. Uh, um this is a horse I know that uh, you and I liked early, early uh, uh, move heading up to the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, yeah, nice horse. I don't know that he's ever beaten really good horses in his wins or even his second in the Indiana Derby, but certainly a nice horse. He'll have the Italian rider Antonio Freso in, in the saddle here, um, like on Match Wisdom. He can pass horses, and if that time form U.S. pace projector comes true, uh, we will see a pretty fast pace here in the nine furlong Pennsylvania Derby. All right, Matt, without further ado, let's get to our top picks and also suggested wagers for these big races. I'll let you go first. We're going to do, let's go with the boys first this time. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, in the Pennsylvania Derby, I, I, I just can't, am not going to be able to go with the uh, short odds on Dragoon Guard as we talked about. Uh, um, I think he is going to have to do better than those grade three victories that are showing up most recently. I am going to take a shot with, uh, and, and I don't know if taking a shot is uh, uh, the right word. 
I'm going to go with unmatched wisdom, who's got plenty of credentials in those three wins to start his career and excuses in the Travers. I don't think he's going to be eight to one, but I, I'm hoping he'll be five or six to one. Yeah, I, I like that pick, Matt. I think Unmatched Wisdom has a has a real shot in here, and I too want to take a shot against Dragoon Guard at I don't know seven to five or something in this tough field. Uh, I can't throw out Seize the Gray, certainly can't throw out Stronghold, but uh, I'm on a long shot here. I, I I think none of the favorites I think are world beaters are, are outstanding outstanding horses. They're good horses, and, and I think Doc Sullivan is a good horse. I think he'll be double digits. On Saturday, and I think he's running good races, uh, probably sneaky good if you just read the past performances. So I'm going to try the New York bred Doc Sullivan with some others in here, but he'll be my top pick. The Cotillion, Matt, I, I think Torpedo Anna's going to probably win. Torpedo Anna for me also. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're 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 not uh, going against the odds or um, trying to pick against the favorite in the cotillion. It's probably a race I, I won't even bet unless it's multi-race wagers, but uh, she's the one to beat there. How about suggested wagers, Matt? You want to go first for us? Sure. No problem, Brian. Uh, um, they, they're short and sweet in here. Nothing, uh, nothing complicated. I'm going to start out with a daily double between the cotill the, the cotillion, which is race 12, and the Penn Derby cold. Daily Double, Brian. Thorpedo Anna with unmatched wisdom. Bet it for however, whatever amount you're comfortable with. And, and then in, in the Penn Derby, you have a, a unmatched wisdom. And then in the, yes, and then in the Penn Derby, uh, my top pick, unmatched wisdom. I am going to make an exact a key box. I am going to use, which means uh, I need unmatched wisdom to finish first or second with either Seize the Gray, Dragoon Guard, or Stronghold. Okay, good luck. Unmatched wisdom. Anywhere near the eight to one, those exactas and even the double will not be terrible. Um, mine is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on Doc Sullivan a little bit, so I'm going to, I'm going to look for him to be 15 to one or so here. So I'm going to, I'm going to put a little 20 to win, 20 to place. Hope Dragoon Guard doesn't even finish in the top two and, and Doc Sullivan gets uh good prices, whether he wins or even runs second. I'll also throw in a little exacta box, uh, again, trying to beat Dragoon Guard, a $5 exacta box, Doc Sullivan, unmatched wisdom. That's got to be a nice exacta. So I just have a $5 exacta box for $10 there. $50 trying to get Doc Sullivan home in the Pennsylvania Derby. All right, Matt, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Sounds good. Uh, uh, a lot to look forward to uh, in the big day of racing at parks. Uh, 11, Brian, 11 stakes races with the minimum purse at $100,000. It's the big day uh, at parks and uh, i will be there i'll look forward to seeing any uh horse center fans on that day excellent matt uh we want to thank everybody for watching as always uh if you haven't yet hit that youtube uh, subscribe button for horse racing nation please do it now turn on the notifications leave matt a thumbs up uh, and, and i a comment we sure do appreciate it also special thanks to candace curtis for the race graphics that we use each week and time form us for the pace projections we use each week and to derby wars as well our sponsor the best contest site out there until next week matt uh, enjoy the weekend at parks the saturday at parks go torpedo anna and i want to wish everyone good luck and a good weekend we'll see you right back here on horse center next week